Good evening, this is Angela with Parkrest Permaculture. It's a lovely summer evening here in Portland, Oregon. Despite the beautiful sunshine and the gentle breeze and the gorgeous sunset that we had yesterday, there's something I'm a little bit frustrated about and I would like to talk about it in this video. Perhaps you can guess based on about 14 examples all over me, I am covered in mosquito bites. They are a scourge for a lot of people in the summer. And so I thought, let's talk about permaculture slash sustainable slash natural things you can do to help deal with and prevent mosquito booms in your garden and in your community. Now, when we talk about mosquito control, it's gonna get a little windy for a second here. So when we talk about controlling mosquitoes, unfortunately, as with any winged insect, um, it's not just about controlling the factors that allow mosquitoes to proliferate in our own yard. It's really a community effort. I do everything that I can to suppress the ability of mosquitoes to uh, reproduce in my own garden, but that doesn't mean that it's not a problem elsewhere. So it really is a community-wide effort. And I know in a lot of communities they use um, you know, scheduled spraying for mosquitoes. And I understand there are all kinds of horrendous mosquito-borne illnesses that um, have historically plagued folks and continue to plague folks. And so I realize it's a public health concern. But there is quite a bit that we actually can do, quite a bit that permaculture design would say that we can do when approaching mosquito control. So as with anything in a permaculture system, we are striving for balance. We are not striving for eradication. Mosquitoes fill an important niche in the ecosystem. So the first thing that we can do is we can try some kinds of natural repellents. And there are a bazillion combinations and ingredients on like clickbait, um, ways to mix up potions to protect yourself from mosquitoes on the internet. A lot of those I'm really skeptical of, but there is some evidence that mosquitoes can have more trouble detecting your scent if you smell like citrus or lemongrass. And so um, those compounds are ones that are used in a lot of homemade remedies, either you know lemon oil, or orange oil, citronella oil, lemongrass oil. Interestingly enough, lemongrass oil smells like the pheromone of a queen honeybee. So you actually use lemongrass oil as an attractant when you are trying to capture a swarm of bees. But for mosquitoes, supposedly, is it, a it is a repellent. The CDC actually says that you can use a combination of lemongrass oil and eucalyptus oil. Um, as with any kind of like oil mixture, you should really, especially one that's botanical in nature, you should spot test it and, you know, perhaps touch base with your dermatologist if that's something you really want to put on yourself. Uh, phytodermatitis, especially when you get in sunshine, is something that is a very real possibility for a lot of botanical compounds that we want to put on our bodies. So I've not found those things to be super effective, but I know other people have. Also included in that is like burning citronella candles or putting like dried um, lemon peel into your fire pit in the summer. So, you know, if you have one that works really well for you, some kind of combination of herbs that actually is effective, please, please drop it in the comments. I would love to hear that. Now let's get into the rest of our list, the six things that have more of a measurable benefit, things that I'm less skeptical of and or know that they work well. So we have the like use a combination of oils, perhaps lemongrass or citrus as our first item. Number two is going to be, be aware of what you're wearing. In fact, when I got all of these mosquito bites on me yesterday, when I was out on my walk, I was wearing navy blue. Mosquitoes are really attracted to dark colors. There's some thought that there are a significant number of animals that they like to prey on, perhaps um, black bears, et cetera, et cetera, that have dark coats. So when you're wearing black, when you're wearing navy blue, when you're wearing dark maroon, those colors are considered attractants to mosquitoes. So think about wearing light colors and pastels during mosquito season to be less appealing. And I would say like a 2B, if we're thinking about what we're putting on our body, not only are dark colors attracting to mosquitoes, but certain scents are as well. So be cognizant of the soaps and perfumes that you're using. Some of those things can make you smell more delicious and make mosquitoes go after you when your friend next to you may have very few bites because they don't use the same kinds of perfumes that you do. So number three, and this is the one I think is the biggest and most efficacious one that we can do that is very, very simple and has a large measurable impact. Dump out standing water scour your garden for any sources of standing water. 
Do you have rain barrels that are open? If so, put a couple of drops of vegetable oil in it and that will spread out over the top and form a barrier through which the mosquito larvae cannot breathe and you will suffocate them. If you have pots around, if you have your kids sandbox toys, anything that can hold standing water, no matter how small of a quantity it is, is a potential breeding ground for mosquitoes. Dump that stuff over. Encourage your neighbors to do so as well. That makes a real measurable difference in the population of mosquitoes. If they have no habitat in which to breed, they're not going to be able to proliferate and continue their life cycle and have a boom in the population in your neighborhood. The next one is that mosquitoes are not particularly strong flyers. So consider if you have a porch like this one here, installing a ceiling fan. Consider having some fans running if you're gonna be enjoying the evening time when mosquitoes tend to be most active in that kind of like post dinner before sunset time when we all want to step out onto the porch or hang out in the backyard as temperatures are cooling off the mosquitoes know we are ripe for the picking consider having some kind of fan going that will deter mosquitoes they don't want to go in front of the path of that fan because they're not super strong flyers the next one is to put up a bat house now this is a really permaculture solution it's a working with the local ecosystem solution it is encouraging natural predator solution Bats can eat as many as 1,000 mosquitoes an hour. They are highly effective mosquito predators, depending on the species. So look for your local nature conservancy or your local extension office and speak to them about like, what are the species of bats in my area? What is the best kind of housing that I wanna have for them? In general, you want to have a bat house that is painted a dark color that is put up high in a tree or on the side of your house is often ideal um, that gets at least six hours of sunshine a day they want a warm sunny location be aware that bat poop will be a thing if they take up residence the downside of this solution as ecological as it is is it can take several years for bats to discover your bat box that you've put up and take up residence. It's not a quick solution. Dumping out a tub of water, quick effective solution. When we're looking at bats, we're looking at a long-term solution that we have to be patient to see the benefits from. It may take a long time, but go ahead and put that bat house up, situate it in a way where you know it's going to be attractive to the bats and just wait and eventually they will come move in, hopefully. Fingers crossed. That leads me to kind of my last solution, which is if we're looking at an ecological permaculture resilience method of dealing with mosquitoes, we cannot look to insecticides. Again, I know we have to work in the real world. I know we have to deal with um, diseases that are transmitted by mosquitoes. I know it's a public health issue, but in the long term, when you use insecticides, all you are doing is encouraging the evolution of organisms that are resistant to those poisons that you're putting on them. It is not a long-term solution. When you are using insecticides, particularly a lot of gardeners use, I spoke about seven and other broad spectrum insecticides in the garden. What you are doing when you are using broad spectrum insecticides is you are not only reducing the population of bugs for the, for the interim, you are also reducing the population of predatory species of bugs that will feed on the bugs you want to control in the first place. Permaculture strives for balance. We are striving to set up a system where we are not eradicating a pest species, as I said at the beginning, but where we are supporting and amplifying the natural predators so that they can control those populations and bring the ecosystem back into balance. When you use broad spectrum insecticides, you are killing damselflies, dragonflies, spiders. You're killing all kinds of bugs that love to eat mosquitoes, damselflies and dragonflies in particular, you've got to be really careful about what you're putting into your waterways because those are your predators of the larval mosquitoes. You want to make sure that you have protected your waterways so that your larval insect predators that go for mosquito larvae and your amphibians and reptiles and fish that are all really vulnerable to those kinds of insecticides and other pollutants that enter the water are kept in a healthy population and are able to control mosquitoes. When we kill off our predators, either through starvation because we have nuked all of their food or through pollution, poisoning, habitat destruction, what we end up with when we have decimated our predator populations is we end up with what is called ecologically a release of the pest species. They are no longer constrained by predators and they can boom in population. 
And so until they are ending up starving so that there's insufficient food supply and that causes them to then naturally die back, um, there's nothing to keep them in check. And there are ample sources of food in the form of humans out in the evening, in their gardens, out in the neighborhood. They're not gonna have a shortage of food. We've got to encourage those natural predators. When we are looking at an ecological permaculture solution, we have to look at those short-term things like flipping over our water, like perhaps thinking about being conscious of what we're putting on our bodies. We have to look at the long-term solutions. We have to look at how our modern industrial ag solutions are causing long-term problems. We have to look at bringing the ecosystem back into balance. When we look at a pest species like a mosquito or any pest in the garden, for me, that really gets me thinking about what is this overabundance of a pest communicating to us as a society, communicating to us as a species? What is it telling us about how our system is out of whack, how we have lost any balance? We need to return to dynamic equilibrium. And so for me, I feel like a significant mosquito problems are a, a, a um, little bit of evidence, a little bit of like a flag being waved, like, hey humans, check out how you've thrown the ecosystem out of balance and see what steps you can take to restore it. Those quick steps that are highly effective in the short term and then those long range steps. We wanna stack up our solutions so that we have an effective, diverse design to keep our mosquitoes in control and keep us from getting bitten the heck up when we are outside in our garden. So we wanna leave enough mosquitoes and other insects for those natural predators to be able to have a healthy population. And we wanna make sure that they are able to keep our pest species in check. So I hope this video was helpful for you. I am gonna get going for my walk. Hopefully I don't get eaten alive again tonight. Please stay well and safe. I will be back from my permaculture garden tomorrow. Thanks.